Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through premature ovarian insufficiency. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash premature ovarian insufficiency or in the gynecology section of the Zero to Finals Obstetrics and Gynecology book. So let's jump straight in. Premature ovarian insufficiency is defined as menopause before the age of 40 years. It's the result of a decline in the normal activity of the ovaries at an early age, and it presents with early onset of the typical symptoms of the menopause. Premature ovarian insufficiency is characterized by hypergonadotropic hypogonadism. This is where underactivity of the gonads, in this case the ovaries, which is hypogonadism, means there's a lack of negative feedback on the pituitary gland. And this results in excessive amounts of gonadotropins, which we call hypergonadotropism. And remember the gonadotropins are LH and FSH. This means hormonal analysis by blood tests will show a raised LH and FSH, the gonadotropins, and a low estradiol level, or an estrogen level. So what are the causes of premature ovarian insufficiency? It can be idiopathic, meaning that the cause is unknown, and this is the case in more than 50% of cases. It can be iatrogenic, meaning due to medical interventions such as chemotherapy, radiotherapy or surgery, for example, oophorectomy, where the ovaries are removed. It can be autoimmune, possibly associated with celiac disease, adrenal insufficiency, type 1 diabetes or thyroid disease. It can be genetic, where there's a positive family history or conditions such as Turner syndrome. And it can be caused by infections such as mumps, tuberculosis, or cytomegalovirus. So how does it present? Premature ovarian insufficiency presents with irregular menstrual periods, a lack of menstrual periods, which is called secondary amenorrhea, and symptoms of low estrogen levels such as hot flushes, night sweats and vaginal dryness. So it presents with the normal symptoms of a menopause. How is it diagnosed? The NICE guidelines on menopause from 2015 say premature ovarian insufficiency can be diagnosed in women younger than 40 years with typical menopausal symptoms plus an elevated FSH level. The FSH level needs to be persistently raised more than 25 international units per litre on two consecutive samples separated by more than four weeks in order to make a diagnosis. The results are difficult to interpret in women taking hormonal contraception because this will affect the gonadotropins or the FSH level. Let's talk about the associations. Women with premature ovarian failure are at a higher risk of multiple conditions relating to the lack of estrogen. And this includes cardiovascular disease, stroke, osteoporosis, cognitive impairment, dementia and Parkinsonism. So how is it managed? Management involves hormonal replacement therapy, or HRT, which should be taken until at least the age at which women are typically expected to go through the menopause. HRT reduces the cardiovascular, osteoporosis, cognitive and psychological risks associated with premature menopause. It's worth noting there's still a small risk of pregnancy in women who have premature ovarian failure, and so they still require contraception. There are two options for HRT in women with premature ovarian insufficiency. They can either take traditional hormonal replacement therapy or the combined oral contraceptive pill. Traditional hormonal replacement therapy is associated with a lower blood pressure compared to the combined pill, 
but the combined pill may be more socially acceptable because there's less stigma for younger women taking the pill compared with HRT. And the combined pill also acts as contraception. Remember that HRT is not contraception. Hormone replacement therapy before the age of 50 is not considered to increase the risk of breast cancer compared with the general population, as women would ordinarily be producing the same hormones that's in the HRT at this age. There may be an increased risk of venous thromboembolism with HRT in women under 50 years, and the risk of VTE can be reduced greatly by using transdermal methods such as patches rather than oral HRT. If you like this video, consider joining the Zero to Finals Patreon account, where you get early access to these videos before they appear on YouTube. You also get access to my comprehensive course on how to learn medicine and do well in medical exams, digital flashcards for rapidly testing the key facts you need for medical exams, early access to the Zero to Finals podcast episodes and question podcasts which you can use to test your knowledge on the go. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.